So GDPR, the General Data Protection Regulation, was passed by the EU in 2016, in May of 2016. Uh, it is, as Ronald was saying, it's, it's four basic things. The right to privacy, the right to be forgotten, privacy built into systems by default, um, and the right to data transfer. It takes effect next year. So it is already in effect. GDPR took effect in, in May of 2016. The enforcement penalties take place uh, the 25th of May, 2018. Now here's where there's two, there's two things on the penalty side that are important for everyone to know. Number one, GDPR is extraterritorial, which means that an EU citizen anywhere on the planet has GDPR goes with them. So say you're a pizza shop in Nebraska uh, you, you know, and, and an EU citizen walks in, orders a pizza, gives them the credit card, and stuff like that. If you, for some reason, store that data, GDPR now applies to to you, Mr. Pizza Shop, whether or not you do business in the EU because an EU citizen's data is with you. So two, the penalties are much stiffer than they ever have been. In the old days, companies could simply write off penalties as saying that's the cost of doing business. With GDPR, the penalties are up to 4% million, uh, 4 of your annual revenue or 20 million euros, whichever is greater, um, and there may be uh, criminal sanctions against the charges against key company executives. So there's a lot of there's a lot of questions about how this is going to be implemented, but one of the first impacts you'll see from a marketing perspective is all the advertising we do targeting people by their age, by their personal identifiable information, by their demographics. Between now and May 25th, 2018, a good chunk of that may have to go away because we may not, you know, there's no way for you to say, well, this person's an EU citizen, this person's not. People give false information all the time online. So how do you differentiate? Every company, regardless of whether they're in the EU or, EU or not, will have to adapt to it uh, or deal with the penalties. Think about you know, the principles that GDPR gives you. I look at that and I think, well, actually, some of these are just good data management practices and principles. It happens to be around personal data for GDPR right now, but those principles are, are just valid for probably kind of any kind of data. So if you're on a digital transformation journey with all the change and with all the opportunity that brings, that actually these practices and principles from GDPR, they should be helping drive things like your digital transformation. And for a lot of our customers, change is the only constant they've got. So actually managing all this whilst everything is changing around you is tough for a lot of them. How are people thinking about the data layer, where it lives, on-prem, in the cloud, how, think about GDPR compliance, you know, all that sort of good stuff. Yeah. You know, how, how are you and, and Red Hat and you know, how, are you, how are you asking people to think about that? So, you know, data management is a big question. Uh, we, we build storage tooling, we understand how to put the bytes on disk and persist and maintain the storage. It's a different question, what are the data services and what is the data governance or policy around placement? And I think it's a really interesting part of the, the ecosystem today. We've been working uh, with some research partners in the Massachusetts Open Cloud and Boston University on a project called Cloud Dataverse, and it has a whole policy uh, uh, question around data. Because there, scientists want to share data sets. You have to control and understand who you're sharing your data sets with. So, definitely a space that, that we are interested in, understand that there's a lot of work to be done there, and GDPR just kind of shines a light right on it. It says policy and governance around where data is placed is actually fundamental and important, and I think it's an important part because you've seen some of the, the data issues uh, recently in the news, uh, and you know, we, we got to get a handle on where data goes, and ultimately, I'd love to see a place where I'm in control of how my data is shared with, with the rest of the world. GDPR provides for two types of things that a business must do. It must provide insight into the data that it's, create, uh, that it's captured about a business or an individual, a uh, legal entity, and it must also then provide uh, the processes for remediating uh, or taking action against that data according to whatever the customer's which is. Absolutely. Tell right. us a little bit about that. So these are two important features because of GDPR. First thing, GDPR has 99 articles and 173 articles and 99 like term technological ways. There are other ways, legal ways to do it, but technologically what they want, like if Peter decides that I need to know from this bank or this social media company how much information you have about me and what are you doing with it? They have to provide that information is 30 days. That is called right to access. And the second thing is you can come and say, well, I'm not using these five things which you sold me earlier. I don't want you to use that information or even have information on that for me or my son or my kid. So you can tell them delete that information or mask that. 
And that's this is called the right to? Right to erasure, right to remove the data. And these two things are very important. This gives customer, they make customer the king. They make the individual the king. He can say, tell me what you have on me and delete what you have on me. Now, the laws have been in the books, in, at least in the, in the EU for GDPR for a while, uh, but the fines start getting leveled May in May. May 25th. Now, we've heard that there's... So, GDPR is a big thing for us and our customers and prospects as well. Uh, so, we are actively working um, on uh, you know, getting uh, GDPR uh, compliant. Uh, today, our platform is FIPS compliant, so that's already a big stepping stone to, uh, to getting there. Um, so we look at GDPR in one of in two ways again, right? One is the solution that we provide to our customers, the data platform and the data protect as we call it, being GDPR compliant, meaning the data that lands on that system, uh, the, the ability to delete the data, the ability to say who, who, who has access to the data, role-based access, things like that. The second aspect is our support and the fact that you know, we have access to a lot of customer information ourselves, right? The fact that you know we can, uh, you know, look at their systems and uh, make sure that everything that we do internally is also GDPR compliant, so that the customers and our support systems and our Salesforce database is all GDPR as well. Yeah. So both those elements come into play, and we are actively working on all of.